do that? Oh, we have not yet offered to do that, Your Excellency. Uh, it is negotiable. Your Excellency, um, in, in, if we would be able to receive our persons, uh, if, if we would be able to receive Captain Link and Dr. VNA, uh, that might be a submission to for, for the diplomats to decide. Is it well? Is diplomacy considered in any principles or standards established to implement diplomatic overtures for the recovery of you know, space objects that are on, on, on the planet, return to the planet? Could that be considered a part of international customary law? Are you asking whether customary international law would require negotiations, Your Excellency? Well, yeah, if you'd like to answer it that way. Uh, well, Your Excellency, the purpose of these space treaties are to encourage cooperation between states. However, in this case, uh, Asperantia unilaterally returned these crew members without first consulting, uh, without first consulting Republica on how these persons should, re should be returned. And, should, and if we had been consulted, there may have been a less expensive manner in, in which to return these persons. So, Counsel, I'm somewhat taken with your opponent's argument that it makes much more sense for the uh, country whose uh, spaceflight participants have landed in another country to pay for that return. As a nation which is active in spacefaring matters, as a policy matter, doesn't wouldn't it make more sense for Republica to just readily pay for the um, uh, transfer of the uh, people back to their home country? Yes, Your Excellency, as a matter of policy, that would make more sense. But this is not what Asperanti has agreed to by signing on to the rescue agreement. By signing Article 4 of the rescue agreement, they have agreed to return Republica's personnel of, a spa personnel of spacecraft without compensation. I'd, li I'd like to also add that the duty to safely and promptly return under Article 4 of the rescue agreement is unconditional. As the language of the Article 4 is clear and definite, stating that Asperantia shall safely and promptly return the personnel of a spacecraft. And the drafting history supports an interpretation of an unconditional obligation. As Article 4 was widely seen as a major concession to the United States to obtain overall agreement to the rescue agreement. And the United States position was that the duty to return must be unconditional to avoid states from detaining persons based on their subjective judgment that some laws may have been violated, just as, Aspirant, or just as Aspirantia currently detains Captain Link and Dr. VNA under their subjective judgment. What if an astronaut had an emergency landing in another country, was rescued, and while waiting to be sent back to his homeland, then committed horrible acts of mayhem and destruction? Would, would even then the return be mandated by the, by the uh, convention? Republica submits that at that point, the rescue agreement simply would not apply, as the purpose of the rescue agreement, and indeed all outer space treaties, is to encourage the peaceful use of outer space. In the hypothetical that Your Excellency proposed, the use of outer space would be used for violent purposes, rather than, the peaceful, rather than peaceful purposes for which space was intended. I'd like to move on to my second argument, that Republica is not liable for the damage to Starflight 1, under Articles 2 or 3 of the Liability Convention. Article 3 of the Convention imposes fault-based liability for damage caused by a space object to the space object of a second launching state. Article 3 is the appropriate liability regime because Starflight 1 was a space object. Although the Liability Convention does not give us the definition of a space object, we submit that a space object is something that is intended to operate in outer space. Here, Star Tours intended that Starflight 1 would reach an altitude of 112 kilometers, taking it beyond the generally accepted delimitations to outer space. So we understand the intention, Council, but I believe the facts indicated that there was expert testimony that Starflight 1 could never reach outer space. Doesn't that change the analysis? Respectfully, Your Excellency, no. As qualified publicists like Carl Crystal have noted, that the key question is not whether the object actually reaches space, but whether the object was intended to reach space. And it is also important to note here that in paragraph 4 of the Compromis, Asperantia has agreed that Starflight 1 was an experimental passenger spacecraft. Although Article 3 is the appropriate liability regime to apply, 
Republica is not liable under Article 3. First, because the cremains capsule that the cremains capsule that Starflight 1 collided with was not a space object. Second, Republica is not at fault. The cremains capsule was not a space object under the Article 1 of the Liability Convention, which provides us with two relevant categories of a space object. The first is a per se space object, and the second is a component part of a space object. A per se space object, at the very least, as the drafters of the Liability Convention were unanimous in, is that it must be capable of controlled movement in space. However, this cremains capsule was never at any time capable of controlled movement in space. Second, the component parts of a space object also constitute a space object. However, a component part is something that is attached to a space object, or at the very least necessary to the operation of a space object. Couldn't this and, capsule be treated as uh, a payload and almost then by definition a space object? Yes, Your Excellency, it would be, a, it would be considered a payload. However, the drafters of the Liability Convention specifically rejected multiple drafts that would have specifically included payloads within the definition of a per se space object. And indeed, they, I would like this court to note that they specifically rejected a provision including objects thrown, detached, or launched from another space object. Uh, in addition, Republica was not at fault under Article 3 of the Liability Convention. Fault constitutes an act or omission attributable to the state that second was also the breach of an international obligation. In this, day, in this case, the release of the cremains capsule was not attributable to Republica under Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty, Treaty or customary international law. Well, Republica placed the vehicle into orbit, or launched and, and put it into orbit. It was a Republica crew, it was a Republica citizen, it was a Republica item, whether it's a space object or not. So I really can't see how you're avoiding liability here. Everything that led to this accident, you know, gets traced back to Republica. Yes, Your Excellency, this was a, a Republican, uh, Station Ferry was a Republican space vessel. However, it was a space vessel run by a private corporation, Station Rider, and, uh, and hence Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty would govern. Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty states that a state is only responsible for the activities which it for national activities of non-governmental entities in space. However, the release of this cremains capsule was not a national activity, as qualified publicists like Carl Crystal have noted at minimum a national activity is something which was authorized by the state. But Republica did not authorize Mr. Ash to release this cremains capsule, but rather a separate container holding capsules. Council, mm -hmm. isn't isn't that rather sorry? <laughs> isn't that rather circular, though? It seems Article Six imposes an obligation on states to go out and supervise the acts of their nationals. So first, you have to figure out what those acts might be. You know, launching a satellite, um, you know, transferring between orbits, something like that. And then the state is responsible for for authorizing it. But there would be no acts of the nationals to authorize if you were only looking at the ones that were authorized, which is what your um, commentator seems to be suggesting. Well, Your Excellency, sentence two of Article Six also requires states to provide supervision for non-governmental entities operating in outer space. In this case, Republica did, com did fulfill its uh, obligations to supervise Station Rider Corporation by passing a number of laws, such as licensing Station Rider Corporation and conditioning these licenses on indemnif indemnification for damages and requiring all non-governmental entities operating in space to ensure that their activities will not endanger the, the uh, integrity of a station ferry mission. Uh, in addition, the release of this cremains capsule. So if we found you liable, you could just turn around and have your, your private actors indemnify you under your regulatory scheme, sounds like? Uh, your Excellency, the... You would not suffer harm. The state would not suffer harm. Yes, under the specific contract with, uh, under the national law, Station Rider Corporation would be required to indemnify, uh, would be required to indemnify the state for its activities. Uh, however, only for its national activities, which this was not, as it was not authorized by the, it was not authorized by the Re Republican government. And Republica fulfilled its obligations 
to supervise Station Rider Corporation's operations. In addition, the release of this cremains capsule did not constitute the breach of an international law because Republica exercised appropriate due diligence under customary international law and the Outer Space Treaty Articles 6 and 9. Uh, this court has found that a violation of due diligence has not occurred unless a state is patently or manifestly negligent under the circumstances, as this court stated in the Congo versus Uganda case, in which it held Uganda liable for activities of its soldiers in the Congo, only because they were deliberate and persistent and encouraged and covered up by the Ugandan government. In contrast, Republica has actually attempted to regulate Station Rider Corporation in order to help prevent harm to other space activities and states by requiring non-governmental entities to sign contracts regulating their behavior and ensuring that they will not uh, endanger the integrity of a station ferry what, mission. Wasn't, isn't the captain of, the, of, the, of Station Rider an agent of the state? Wasn't this a mission to your space station? Uh, respectfully, Your Excellency, we submit that Captain Link was not an agent of the state. Rather, he was an employee of a private corporation, <coughs> Station Rider Corporation. And although Station Rider Corporation fulfilled some public functions by assisting us in supplying the National Space Station, while engaged in space tourism activities, such as Mr. Ash's space walk, they were operating outside the scope of the public functions which we assigned to Station Rider Corporation. Uh, in the alternative, Your Excellencies, if you find that Starflight 1 was an aircraft rather than a space object, Republica would still not be liable under Article 2 of the Liability Convention, which imposes absolute liability for damage caused by a space object to an aircraft in flight. We, Republica would not be liable, first, because as I previously stated, the cremains capsule is not a space object. And second, Article 6 of the, uh, Article 6 of the Liability Convention exonerates Republica from liability due to gross negligence by Star Tours and the persons on board Starflight One. Star Tours was grossly negligent when it intentionally incorporated in a state like Asperantia, which has no space legislation whatsoever, in order to avoid regulation of outer space and application of the space treaties. At the very least, Republica should be exonerated from liability for the three fatalities on board Starflight One as it was grossly negligent for three of the persons on board Starflight One to have removed their safety equipment, their pressure suit helmets, in the course of a dangerous activity such as suborbital flight. If your excellencies have no further questions, I would like to turn over my... I, I have one further question. Are you suggesting that if someone doesn't go find a state in which will regulate them, that they are incapable of acting without <coughs> gross negligence? Your Excellency, this, uh, I would not characterize the circumstance uh, like, uh, in, in this circumstance is different from the one you have mentioned, Your Excellency, because in this case, paragraph four of the Compromise states that Star Tours intentionally incorporated in a state which did not have space legislation in order to avoid application of the space treaties. If Your Excellencies have... Don't, don't companies do that all the time? I mean, they incorporate in states with low tax rates, they incorporate in, they fly flags from countries with low regulations to keep their costs down. Are we, are we saying basically that companies and states all across the world are grossly negligent because they do that? Your Excellency, when states decide to operate in... in when I'm sorry, when corporations decide to operate in states which lack regulation or protection, they do assume a greater risk that they, that they may lose their financial assets or may be damaged, as in this case, uh, Star Tours was damaged. <clears throat> if your excellencies have no further questions, I'd like to turn over the podium to my co-agent. Mr. President, 